This is Jambo Radio. Welcome sports fans to another edition of Sports Engine, reaching you on the platform Jambo Radio. Whose court name remains Ladi Egbedere. Joining me on the show today are my co-host Eddie Femi Afolabi alongside Dele Oshodi Glover. Welcome guys, welcome on board. Quite a bit. Nice to be on the show once again. It's been a while. <laughs> Yeah, the World Cup is around the corner, and I'm sure a lot of uh, football fans can't wait right now to hear gist concerning the World Cup. For me, the biggest story coming out concerning the World Cup and concerning Africans to the World Cup is that of Sadio Mane. We had learned that he got injured in the game between uh, Bayern Munich and Werder Bremen yesterday, and it's a doubt for the World Cup, talking about the Senegalese team going to the World Cup. What kind of impact do you think that will have on the makeup of that uh, Senegalese team? We'll talk about that when we get there. But before we talk about the World Cup fully, let's start on a, on a basketball note. And uh, we're going to start with this story that says that if you, if uh, I think I should probably tell you guys and let you guys know that the, that's the final eight. It's talking about the Nigerian Basketball Professional League is on right now at the indoor sports hall of the National Stadium in Surulere. And yesterday, just yesterday, a lot of games were played today, actually, and some matches were also played yesterday and the day before. But yesterday, Let's quickly tell you that I center Anthony Coco scored 12 points and 12 rebounds alongside three assists and four blocks to power River Upers to a 67-60 win over Gombe Bulls in the Nigerian Professional Basketball League Final 8, taking place at the Indo Sports Hall of National Stadium in Surrey. In another encounter, Quara Falcons, who are really doing very well right now, they've won two out of two. I think as at this moment, they've won three out of three. Uh, they dispatched Kano Pillars yesterday, 65-54, to record their second straight victory in the tournament. And in other results, Benway Braves defeated Police Bats on 61-43, while Nigerian Customs crashed Lagos Islanders 70-54. I'm sure a lot of people didn't see that coming because of the pedigree of Lagos Islanders in Nigerian basketball. But it's, <laughs> it's a new dawn right now. New teams are coming up and they're coming real strong. Quara Falcons and, Roy and River Upers led the log with two wins apiece. I think right now, uh, River Upers should have their own third game should be ongoing right now. In today's pictures, Lagos Islanders already lost to Benway Briefs and a Police Baton lost to Nigerian Customs. Uh, police Baton lost to Nigerian Customs 49 71, while Lagos Islanders lost just by points to Benway Briefs 58 59. Now, uh, Dele, what's your take on let, let me just say that it's nice to have basketball back at the Sports City. You know, what's your take on the performance of these teams and what do you think uh, this can, you know, do for Nigerian basketball going forward? Um, Ladi, leading into what you just said, um, a few weeks ago, we almost had an argument about the hierarchy of basketball in Nigeria. I'm glad that um, swords have been put aside and progress has been made in Nigerian basketball. Having said that, I'm also happy that there's so much competitiveness in basketball in the league in Nigeria. Uh, once upon a time, it was just Totten Warriors, Lagos Island, this kind of pillars that everyone was talking about. But these days, they're being beaten. I myself, I'm still in uh, like, are you serious? Lagos Island is beating a game. Well, that's so at least it goes to show that some people are invested in this sport. Some people are rising to the battle, to the metal, to make sure everything works out for good. See, there are people who ply their trade in Nigeria and their aim, their target is to go to Europe, to go to America, and go and you know earn good pay, go for greener pastures. But if they don't play in the local league, nobody will see them. That's why we have to promote our local league. Glad to say that the local league is doing relatively well. We have new teams that do relatively well. Um, I just hope that um, the boys we know will rise to the metal where the need arises. Yeah, but uh, it's too bad that uh, it seems like uh, Lagos Islanders cannot compete again with the likes of you know Nigerian Customs. Nigerian Customs in, in time past used to be a team that used to struggle against the a, a rivers uh, upas the what's it called the canoe pillars but now but now is a different ball game canoe pillars they're not even a match for all the rest of the teams in the savannah conference not to talk of facing teams in the atlantic conference so it's as if the atlantic conference has actually taken over you know the dominance of basketball right now because it used to be savannah conference in time past but now the atlantic conference is coming up real strong and from the look of things, I think we might just see two teams in the Atlantic mm -hmm. Conference, you know, meeting in the final. Any Femi, what's your take? Um, my point will be I will have to support what Oshoti just said. 
right? It's a good development for the league and for the game itself. If Lagos Islanders can be beaten, you know, in a basketball game, that tells you that there is investment into the game now and then the league could develop from there. And that's what we really want. We want these players to play at home so that people can scout them and take them abroad and they can show more of what they can do. They can show their skills, you know, where they can, you know, like in America or Spain, most of them want to go to Europe as well, you know. So, but the league, the way it is now, is encouraging and is helping those boys, to, you know, and the girls to come and showcase their skill there. I think it's a good development. I, 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 I saw, I saw the game between uh, what's it called? Uh, I think I saw the game between Braves, the Benway Braves, and uh, Lagos Islanders. The turnout there was very, very poor. Unlike what we used to have in time past when you used to see massive crowd at indoor sports off of National Stadium, you know, rooting for their teams. I don't know, is it, it does it have to do with uh, the break they had? Or probably is it that has to do with the fact that the fans are no more interested in, you know, watching the game? Uh, I would say, you know, the, the more you play games and um, the more people get entang I mean, entangled into it, like, you know, my team is playing, I belong to this team. People will come out and watch it. It's like the Nigerian Professional League. There was a time, you know, the stadium were dry, but look at the stadium now. People come there, come and watch game. With time, if the league keeps going like that, and you see teams beating people like the Lagos Islanders, fans want to come and see it. There are basketball sure of that, a lot of them. Yeah, if Lagos Islanders can be beaten, Canopillas can be beaten, anybody can be beaten, <laughs> most definitely. And if they, well, if they uh, like, like, want to chip in something. Yes, I just wanted to add on something to what the Femi said earlier. And continuity is very, very key in anything you do in this life, including sports. There was a huge void in basketball in Nigeria, which we all know about. We thank God that um, that void is being, has been worked on over time. And whether we like it or not, someday, sometime, these fans will start coming back to various stadia across the country, hopefully. But like um, I was going to say earlier, talent is not enough to make any team better than the next team. You need more than talent. Mm -hmm. Lagos Islanders of today is not the Lagos Islanders of yesterday. Laddie, when you and I do Lagos Islanders, I mean, if you play for Lagos Islanders, it means you were the best of the best. That's how it was. But these days when, you know, relatively unknown teams are beating them, you're like, okay, yes, I think uh, this is something we should look forward to. So, like I said, it's becoming very, very competitive. And we only hope the best of the best, you know, make their way out of this league and become better people for themselves and the nation at large. Mm -hmm. All right, then we hope that they will do something better. Kudos must go to Musa Kida and uh, Babs Ogunade and the rest of the team for doing a fantastic job for bringing basketball back to life at the indoor sports of the National Stadium. Right. We love you guys. Continue to do the great work, man. Kudos to you guys. Let's quickly move on, on to other sports. And after several agitations by concerned individuals, traditional sports and para swimming, have been included among the games for the 2022 National Sports Festival built for Delta State. The eventual inclusion was communicated to a participating teams through a circular signed by the Secretary of the Games Accreditation Subcommittee, Okiri Emmanuel. Now, what kind of impact do you think traditional sports will have at the National Sports Festival? I remember back in time, we used to cover traditional sport all the way from Ikorodu, Ibogbo, you know, and all those waterside areas. We used to go watch Ayo watch Dambe, watch a, all this traditional wrestling, and the turnout then was massive. I must say kudos should go to the former governor of Lagos State, talking about Babatune Fashola, alongside Prince Wale Oladunjoe. They gave so much, you know, to traditional sports back in time, but suddenly everything just went quiet. But now mm -hmm. it's going to be part of the National Sports Festival. What kind of impact do you think that's um, going to have on the growth of the game? Well, you haven't read the reports that um, I saw that uh, there had to be a protest for this sport to be included in the National Sports Festival. It's very, very that, that sad. Is, that 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 is para, that's para, yeah, para athletics. Uh, it, para it, it's, sad that, it's sad that they had to go that level. But let's talk about traditional sports and the National Sports Festival in the country. There are people 
who have followed traditional sports all their life. There are people that don't even know what football is. All they know is Dan Bay, IU, you name it. That's all they know. They have their own followership. You can't push them aside. You can't shelve them aside. Dan Bay is not just in Nigeria alone. In other West African countries, these traditional sports also apply. We cannot push this Senegal, aside. Because Mali, Mali, it's a source of livelihood for certain people. It's a source That's of right. inspiration for certain people. It's very, very important to certain people. And what is good for the goose is good for the Ghana. If other sports can be included into the national sports as well, I see no reason why traditional sports shouldn't be included. And thank God all things being equal has been included. And um, all the athletes that will take part in it, congratulations to them. We understand that five athletes each will go for each sport. Congratulations to them, I'm sure. And they didn't see it coming. A very short... Um, the organizers have put a smile on the faces of these athletes and their families. So we see how things pan out, and congratulations to them once again. Now, and if I mean, don't you think it's shocking for the para athletes to protest before they were included in the games? We know that in time past, para athletes have been one of the most, have been, I think, the best Nigerian representative at major yeah. events. Yeah. Save yeah. these Commonwealth Games that. We saw our girls, you know, they came out and they did fantastically well. Before then, it used to be para athletes have been putting Nigeria on the podium. So now, do they need to agitate? Do they need to protest before they get included into the National Sports Festival? Is it supposed to go no. that route? No, I think it's poor of the uh, National Sports Commission, you know, or the NOC that's organizing this. Um, if you see this para lifting, look at all over the world. They've been promoted, you know, and they get participated in tournament just to encourage them. They are, you know, they are para athletes. They need to be encouraged to be put on board. But what I'm really disappointed about is, I just learned that the National Sports Commission is just bringing this traditional sports into into National Sports Festival. It's disgraceful because this is an avenue for them to promote this sport. You know, among people, you know, not everybody want to play football and not everybody can play football, right? It's like I was discussing with one of my friends last year and he, he was talking about this IU game, you know, how can you promote it on his own? You know, it's a traditional sport. People, if you promote it and you get sponsors for it, people will come from anywhere in Nigeria to come and That's play right. at the national sport. At national stadium yeah it will encourage them they will go back home with you know the bonuses prize money and things like that you know i'm just it's just shocking it's that empowering they, the people as well and they have to go this far before yeah, they can get correct. Let, let, let's quickly move on to boxing where boxing promoter eddie Hearn has declared that anthony joshua lost faith with boxing after the collapse of talks where he fight with tyson the gypsy king fury AJ was in talks about a potential all British heavyweight clash in December, and Fury set several public deadlines for the fight to be agreed, but the deal was never finalized. We know that Fury right now is going up against Derek Chisora in December, and AJ is here to decide who is going to fight next. Now, some people are uh, at the same time, Eddie Hearn also said that he might, that every possibility might take on the Chinese boxer, Zheng Zeli, at the Bet's Nest Stadium in Beijing, probably later this year or next year. Now, what is your take, guys? What's the, what kind of impact do you think this is going to have on the development of AJ? Because I thought after losing out to Alexander Usyk and, you know, getting the chance to go up against the Gypsy King, you, you shouldn't turn down that kind of opportunity. Apart from the fact that it's, it's good payday for him, it's a, it's a very good opportunity for him to get to lay his hand on another title. So I, 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 was, yeah. I, I was actually shocked when I realized that the fight is not going to happen. Ladi Zemo, I remember weeks ago, <laughs> again, we had this talk on this program about AJ and his prospects in the heavyweight division. And I said to you both categorically, I said, AJ doesn't stand a chance against these top dogs. Let's face reality. Now, AJ mm. thought about it. AJ and the team thought about it that he had lost twice to Usyk back to back. He had lost to Andy Ruiz Jr a while back he cannot afford to lose immediately he okay. can't afford to lose anytime soon if not to be a forgotten man aj realized that he didn't stand a chance against tyson fury at that point in time he just played smart no 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 i won't go up against the best of the best now i'll lose it's just common sense 
and I'm not bragging, I'm not trying to put him down, I'm not trying to chastise him, but I'm saying it as it is. AJ cannot go up against Tyson Fury now because he will lose woefully. Let's face reality. He will lose. That's true. Now, going up against the man from China, my brother, it's it's a staged fight. They're trying to look for a bout where they know that this man has a 90% chance of winning. Why? To build up his mentality, to build up his psyche, to make him remember that you're a champion, you're once a champion, you can always do it. That is what it is. He dares not fight Yusik now. He will lose again. He dares not fight Wilder. He will lose to Wilder. He dares not fight Fury. He will lose to Wilder. Fury. He's he right will, he fight will, Deontay, he will lose against a Deontay Wilder? Come on, Daniel. What yeah. are you about, right. man? What are you about? Laddie, 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 this is Daniel Shudiglova speaking. Not Laddie Egbediri. According to Daniel Shudiglova, I have the opinion that AJ will lose to Deontay Wilder now. He doesn't have the mental capacity to go up against <laughs> Deontay Wilder now. That's what I'm saying. Well, now, well, what are you saying? What are you I saying? Support, I support, you know what I'm saying is, you, know, you, guys are now you guys are now teaming up against me on this show. Why will you support him? Why can't you just no, no, be in no, the no. middle? No, <laughs> uh, you have to look at it from, you know, from this angle that if he's a professional fight, uh, boxer and he's going against another professional at this time, no, he's professional enough to to reject the fight because he will have lost against Fury and that will have been the end of it and that's what Fury wanted he wanted to challenge him for the British heavyweight boxing fight to you know put the money down and then just end, and to do end his career. career just like that so that so that probably AJ will yeah. not go into fishing like some people are into fishing right now yeah. that's what he's supposed to do you know uh, yeah, he has you, to guys, go you, guys, you guys are not nice man template you know it's say true, it as though. it is that's our job laddie say it as it is say that it is man you guys are nice you guys are nice at all but let's move on, on to another sport another combat sport i'm talking about wrestling now world wrestling entertainment that's wwe in conjunction with super sport has announced a continent wide talent search to find the next african talent you know that will compete at wwe the campaign was announced on tuesday in lagos the whole city for the multi-day tryout in february 2023 in attendance at the event we had two wwe superstars talking about omos that's the giants the nigerian giants and apollo cruz as who returned home after 14 years without seeing his family and interested candidates are to submit a video alerting their potential to become a wwe superstar Successful applicants will be invited to participate in the Lagos tryout in February 2023. A select number of crowd participants will then be awarded an all expense paid experience to continue their trial journey alongside current and prospective WWE superstars ahead of the WrestleMania 39 in Los Angeles in April 2023. A full time WWE developmental contract may be offered to the top performing participants who will then begin their new careers at the world-class WWE Performance Center in Orlando, Florida. That's a, that's a very massive one. A big opportunity for Africans all big over, up. not just Nigerians now. Uh, Ladi, um, first things first, um, um, this, this is one of the times that makes me realize that I'm proud to be a Nigerian. Almost is a seven foot plus giant in the WWE. Apollo Crews is a former US champion in the WWE. These were people that initially didn't identify with Nigeria. And then they realized that they were Nigerians and they started flying the flag of Nigeria every time they went into the ring. Apollo Crews has the flag of Nigeria on what he wears to wrestle. So does Omos. He wears the Nigerian flags every time he fights. He goes to show that these people are proud to be Nigerians and are proud that they're giving back to their roots, whether they like it or not, whether they're based in America or based anywhere, they are Nigerians. Hence the reason why they went to Nigeria, they went to Lagos for this initiative. Now, Ladi, let me take you back. <laughs> Yourself, Adi, baby. Remember wrestling in Nigeria back in the day? <laughs> <laughs> I won't call their names, but remember our wrestlers. Uh, is this an opportunity for them to eventually fly their trade in the WWE, which is like the biggest, the biggest, the biggest platform biggest for any wrestler today? And I hope that um, most, most, some of them will key into this. And um, the ones that we know are really old. I'm, I'm sure the ones with like, the ones we know are in their fifties, sixties. 
I'm sure you know them. I don't <laughs> mention their names. So I hope they give me a younger generation of wrestlers that will change things. No. No, I, I think I think it has to be the younger generation of wrestlers that will keep into this because most of the wrestlers we have back in time, a lot of them are they've, they've gone past their prime. So we're looking at youngsters now because looking at almost for instance, nobody knew him until they started fighting in WWE. So we need to see yes. new faces, not all those old school guys who've been there for like forever who don't want to train the tour because I would like to have an ambulance on the ringside, <laughs> at the ringside where the fight is going on. You know what I mean? So we're talking about seeing new generation of wrestlers coming up you know, to exhibit their skills. I feel we have a lot of Nigerian guys who are big, who are massive, who are courageous, like almost, and uh, uh, the Apollo crews who can really make this happen for themselves because it's an opportunity to empower themselves and to better their lot. Very, very right, big opportunity. Massive one. Let's move on, on to football now. And uh, the biggest story, like I said earlier, coming out from Africa, because we have five African countries that will participate at the World Cup. We're talking about Senegal, Morocco, Cameroon and I, uh, what else again? We have Tunisia as well and Morocco. inside Ghana. Now, yeah, I mentioned Ghana. Morocco earlier. Morocco, Cameroon, okay. Tunisia, yeah. and Ghana. Now, for the Senegalese, their talisman, it might be out of this game. What kind of impact do you think is going to happen in the makeup of that Senegalese team? Do you think they have a ready made replacement for Sadio Mane? Ladi, um, there is no player. That is like say the money of today. Let's face reality. In the last two, three years, say the money has <laughs> been one of the most consistent. Give to that. Uh, hello, hello, laddie. I have the floor now. I have the floor now, please. Um, in the last two, three years, say the money has been exceptional for both club and country. Already in Bayern, he's scored 15 goals this season. He's been part of 22 goals so far. This is the man that just won an award in the last Ballon d'Or Ballon d'Or Awards for his exemplary contribution to life, humanitarian efforts towards lifestyle, towards people. That can be forgotten. He wasn't just rewarded for that. He was rewarded for his exploits on the field of play as well. Mane has been the best African footballer in the last two, three years, according to me. Now, we know what he did with Senegal at the African Cup of Nations. We know what we did in, with Senegal trying to qualify for the FIFA World Cup. Sadio Mane was inspirational to Senegal's efforts in qualifying and winning the African Cup of Nations and qualifying for the FIFA World Cup and also club football. Sadio Mane was inspirational in helping Liverpool fight for four trophies the previous season. Having joined Bayern Munich now, we know what he's been doing with Bayern Munich so far. It's going to be a big miss for Bayern. It's going to be a big miss for Senegal. But we're talking about the World Cup. For me, I thought Senegal stood the biggest and had the brightest chance amongst the African nations going into the FIFA World Cup. Why? Because of the X factor, say the money. Having ruled out, say the money now, yes, they might have a likely replacement or likely replacements, but nobody, no player can be like say the money in Senegal or in Bayern Munich as it stands. It's a big miss, not just for Senegal, but for Africa, because I know people like me, I was looking forward to the World Cup, looking forward to Senegal, looking forward to seeing money going up, up against the best. The World Cup is the best of the best. If you play at the World Cup, it means you are the best of the best. It's very, very sad that Mane has joined the long list of footballers who will be going to the FIFA World Cup this year. Very, very painful. Now, talking about the FIFA World Cup this year, if you look at the timing, the timetable of the World Cup and the fact that the league has to go on hold before and for the World Cup to take place, do you think this is a perfect time to have the World Cup, guys? And if any, what's your take on that? Um, Laji, uh, I would say it's not the perfect time to have the, uh, the, the World Cup. But is it the perfect time to start talking about it? I don't think so. This World Cup was awarded 12 years ago. And we all there. We all saw it. We knew. We're going to go to Qatar in 2022, and it's going to be arranged within so so time and so so time. Everybody accepted it, right? But don't let get distracted. The World Cup is coming up. We're missing players. But for me, like Oshodi said, the, the player I'm looking forward to see at the World Cup is Saido Man, but it's not going to be there now. So I'm going to miss him. You know, if he's not going to make it, I'm going to miss him because I'm looking forward like every other African just to look, you know, look forward to him playing or representing Africa, not only Senegal, Africa at the World Cup because he's one of our best players and he's the best player as a clown in Africa. 
you know. So it's a good so They're talking about players that missed the World Cup. Let's quickly inform you that crucial defender Stevan Ambrosio, who happens to be a Ghanaian, a German born Ghanaian player, is also, you know, out of the World Cup because he picked up an injury in a game that was played over the weekend. So he's also listed out of uh, the World Cup as well. Now let's look at some top class players, some other world class players that will not be part of the World Cup. The list is kind of, uh, it's not too nice because I'll tell you something. We are just seeing that a lot of fantastic players are missing out. Paul Pogba is not certain if he's going to be part of the game. He's yet to play a game for uh, Juventus this season. So there is every possibility that he might not be part of the World Cup. Even if he goes to the World Cup, he won't be fully fit. And Golo Kante is also listed to miss the World Cup. Diego Jota of Liverpool is listed to miss the World Cup. Uh, James, uh, uh, Rhys James, the English player that plays for Chelsea, I think is also a doubt for the World Cup as well. Alongside uh, Varane, then uh, uh, what's it called? Georgini Wijnaldum is also out of the World Cup for, for uh, Gigi. It's also out of the World Cup for, for uh, the, the, the Dutch team. So, and, and uh, yeah, the, yeah, the Netherlands, the Dutch team. And don't forget Timo Werner. Because mm -hmm. if you look at the German squad right now, for me, they are not really playing at the level we used to know them. So when you miss a player like Timo Werner, even though it wasn't really successful with Chelsea, but he's gone back to RB Leipzig and he's doing very well with RB Leipzig. And for a guy like that to miss the World Cup is going to affect that German squad most definitely. That's already missing Tony Cruz, who said he wants to be with his family. He doesn't want to go to the World Cup. Uh, so, Lady, I, Lady, me, not... I feel the timing, the timing is... You want to say it's something? Really? Yeah, uh, no, let me allow you land. I'll allow you land. Land. And don't forget, so it wasn't yesterday that the former uh, FIFA president, Sir Blatter, came out to say that awarding the World Cup, you know, to Qatar was very, very wrong. But we all know why the World Cup was awarded to Qatar and to Russia. Laddie. Laddie. Hey. Lady. We all know what is in hands. Laddie. Yes, Delio. Just, like we, yeah, we'll just like we said earlier, 12 years ago, we were all together, or we were all in contact when this decision was made. So for me, this is campaign after election. For me, Seplata shouldn't even be saying anything. Seplata shouldn't be, saying... be important right now because he sat down when mm -hmm. they made this decision. He was part of mm -hmm. the people that made this decision. So Se please, Se we don't Se want Blatter, to excuse, excuse me, Dele, excuse me, Dele. Seplata said he actually voted for USA to host the World Cup, but Mitchell Platini how do we know that? actually took him vote in that? favor of Qatar. No, that's what he said. Are and it's left, for, you know, it's left for Mitchell Platini to come out and, in, and, and rebuke the statement and say, no, I actually didn't do that. He is saying that he actually wanted indicted. to the World Cup. Both men were indicted for fraudulent activity and were later... That's right. They let us sweat this case under the carpet like nothing happened. All of us know what happened. We don't need to argue about that. Let's put that aside. But let's talk about the... We we're talking about um, Timo Werner. Um, Timo Werner will not go to the World Cup. Yes, he's rejuvenated at RB Leipzig. Yes, but let's not forget that the Germans hardly play with a number nine. They hardly play with a top man. They always play with a false nine. These people play five midfielders and just allow one person to roll, do anything he wants. They have a Musulera. They have a man who will never go old, Thomas Muller. He will never <laughs> go old. He's still playing. There are lots of German players that can fill the void that this lad is going to leave. So let's leave Timo That's Werner. True. Tony Cruz, yes. There are lots of players that can also fill Tony Cruz's position, but they cannot be like Tony Cruz. So do not write off the Germans. You write them off, you write them off at your own peril. The Germans are one of the teams to look forward to at this FIFA World Cup. Quote me, you say I said so. I'm not saying they'll win the World Cup, now, but hey, the, I don't think they'll. Paulo Dybala. Paulo Dybala is also listed as a, one of the injured players that might not be at the World Cup. Do you think the uh, the Argentines will miss him that much? Any for me? No, I don't think so. I think the Argentines are one of the favorites for this World Cup. If you look at the way they, they've not lost a game in how many games now they've played. So they are like hot favorite for this World Cup alongside Brazil and maybe Germany. But Paulo Dybala is a very important player to them. He's it has always been, but the last team, the last time I watched them, it wasn't in the team, and they still won. You know, so I see them as a very, very strong side going to this World Cup. Honestly, this is going to be Messi's last World Cup. 
and I expect them to do something. They might not win it, but maybe I'll keep them for the final. They're very, really, very strong side this time around. Now, now if you look Bala. at the makeup of that Brazilian, we, we saw we saw the Brazilian team. The the coach will list the players that are going to the World Cup, not a professional list. He didn't release a 55 man squad that will be prone down to 22 or 23. He released his full list of players going to the World Cup. That's a makeup of a team that knows what they are doing. Yeah. Now, yeah, for yeah. a Roberto Firmino, for a Roberto Firmino to be missing from that Brazilian squad. And that Brazilian squad is still oozing with talent. What does it portray at the World Cup? Do you think the rest of the world can match up with that Brazilian squad? But I said something yesterday. I said they can get their acts right defensively. It's going to be very difficult for any defense to stop that attack of that Brazil, of that Brazilian attack. If they can get their acts right defensively. For me, in football, in world football now, there's no better striker than Gabriel Jesus in terms of work ethic and what he brings to the team. Gabriel Jesus is a starter in any team, any team you want, be it Real Madrid, be it Barcelona, Gabriel Jesus will start. He's that good. You have a Vinicius Junior. My days. Vinicius Junior is a man plus one. You can't take it away from him. You have a Ritalism, very stubborn, great pace, aggressiveness. He has it all. They have lots of strikers in that team that, my brother, if you mention for me, but Femi is, is there has been. Let Femi rest. Talk about their midfield. They have a star-studded midfield side. You talk about their defense. Danny Alves even made the team to show you that they even had room, room for experience in the team. They have Marquinhos in that team. They have lots of players in that team. They have Brenner who plays for Juventus, the defender. They have room for new boys also in that team. You want to talk about their goalkeeping department? Edison, Allison, and the other lad in Brazil. You can't even read. So you see this Brazilian team, fear them. It's really? star study. What I said to really? you earlier, if you go to the World Cup, it means you are the best of the best. I don't care if you play for Costa Rica. I don't care the country you play for. It means you are the best of the best. So every player that is going to go to the World Cup, and you know where we are from, what we say, if person no spoil, person no feel better. So certain people, certain mm -hmm. players have gotten injured. It has opened the door for other players to make a claim for themselves. Money will not go to the World Cup. Yes, we will miss him, but somebody is going to have to fill that void of say the money. Timo Werner won't go. Someone is going to have to fill that void. But that's how it is. That's life, laddie. So let people take opportunities and look forward but to the I'm, World Cup. If you look at Rashford, you want to ship in something? Yeah. If you, For example, if you look at Rashford, Rashford broke into the Man United team because the main player was injured. And the and the boy that was understanding that striker had to go on loan, so they had to bring Rashford in. Today, Rashford is one of the Man United first eleven, and he might go to the World Cup. That's the way life he is. Might, he might start the World Cup. Yeah, so that's the way it is. Well, so that's right. That's still talking World Cup. Still talking World Cup, guys. Gan Ghanians on social media have just had fever. For omitting Thomas Patti's name from the list of Black Stars players to watch out for at the World Cup. Andre Ayu, Kudus Mohammed, Daniel Amate, Inaki Williams, and Fatau Ishaku we are listed on the Black Stars players to watch in Qatar without Thomas Patti. <laughs> and the Ghanaians are so crazy about it. They, they don't like it because they feel Patti is their best player. How come Patti is not on the list? Yeah, they will not be right today. <laughs> I still talking Ghana. Okay. Former Black Stars midfielder Sule, Sule Muntari has told the current team to work hard and luck will present itself ahead of 2022 FIFA World Cup. The Ghana Football Association has been on a praying spree for the Black Stars in hopes the team excels at the World Cup in Qatar. However, the 38 year old believes the team can only succeed if they work hard. He said prayers should be con combined with dedication if the Black Stars mm -hmm. were to succeed. Now, I know that a lot of African countries, they lay so much emphasis on prayer. It's as if the rest of the world are yes. devil worshippers. No, no, no. That's why I see it. It's as if the rest of the world are devil worshippers. I, 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 are you because referring you to us, Lani? Like you pray. It doesn't help. Are you not African? We're, we're all African here. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, are you referring to Nigeria? Are you referring to Nigeria? <laughs> we are all African. Because, because if you walk out, because I remember when I was in school back in the day, the motto of my school was walk and pray. You know, they didn't say walk pray, up. they say walk and pray. 
You understand? But now you lay too much emphasis on prayer, prayer, prayer without the necessary, you know, hard work. It doesn't work like that. It doesn't work like Lady, that. Laddie, um, this um, ex-professional you just mentioned, Sule Montari, is a player who has played for the likes of Inter Milan, AC Milan, has played at the Nations mm -hmm. Cup, has played at the World Cup. He's well-traveled. He has bags of experience. This is the man who has played at the highest level. So you understand that prayers are not enough to get you results. My brother, if you do not no. work hard, forget about it so it's a simple advice going out to the younger generation going to the world cup to represent ghana a country where he's from telling that oh boy not the only prayer on our need you have to work hard train morning afternoon night then pray <laughs> that is what will happen you can't just be praying morning tonight and expect miracles to work we know how this will act now i will not call names i will not give you instances but i'll just leave it at that and if you want to chip in something before we move on yeah, because we do that a lot in Africa, and I don't think it makes sense, you know. <laughs> it doesn't bring anything. We've done it. How many times have we gone to a football pitch and we have to pray before the game, half time, and after the game? We still get beat. It doesn't help, man. Yeah, they, they, at the end of the day, we still get beaten, man. <laughs> <laughs> that's right, that's right. Okay, let's quickly move on now to international friendly. Uh, the delegation of the Super Eagles that is supposed to take on uh, Costa Rica in the city's capital tomorrow have arrived there, and uh, the match is supposed to take place tomorrow. And don't forget, apart from that, and that's make the, the team is actually made up of uh, home-based players. Home base, and yeah. we know that the Super Eagles will also have another friendly match against Portugal, where the where the professional players will execute that game. I think that's coming up on the 17th of November, uh, some few days before the World Cup commences. So. How do you guys see that game against uh, Portugal? Do you think we fine? I know that Nigerian players are doing very well right now, but you see, what surprise, what amazes me about Nigerian players, and I still can't get a grip around it, is that when you see these guys play for their various club side, they play good football, beautiful football, but when they come play for the national team, it's a different ball game. Why? What is missing in that mix? I still can't lay my hands on it. I think there's something missing. You see, the coaching. Or is it the quality of the pitch? Or is it the is it the is it the temperature of the country? Or, or what? I don't know. What is really affecting? Because when you see these guys play in Europe, they do they, they do very well, fantastically well. But when they come home, say Ladi, um, coaching goes a long way in a team, in a football team. I was privileged to meet Didier Deschamps a while back, and I asked him a very simple question. I said, coach, how do you manage the egos of your players in the French national team? He said, no player in that team is bigger than me. That was enough for me to conclude what this man was trying to say. It means that he has played at the highest level. He has done everything there is to do that those players haven't even done. So they can't talk to him. If you get a coach that our players do not respect, my brother will do whatever it is they want to do. I've been privileged to meet some of our Super Eagles players in this country. And I asked them, I was so upset. I asked them, I said, you there, yeah, they love you, so now they flex now. And I know they go walk up. Shame, no, they catch you. They sit down with people where they go walk up. And he said, guy, no, blame me. Blame Eguavon. Eguavon mm -hmm. this, Eguavon this, Eguavon this, Eguavon this, Eguavon this. I won't go into details, but my brother, if players do not respect their coaches, my brother, they will not play for the coach. They will play for themselves. They will fake yeah, injuries. Yeah. They will fake injuries and they will do all sorts of things. There are players that no believe matter. that they are bigger than their coach. Remember when Sonny Ulisse was coach of the Super Eagles? Sonny Ulisse was a no nonsense. He didn't, oh, right, yeah. he didn't have time for nonsense. He didn't have time for nonsense. You are not bigger than me. That is why I'm the coach. Iron hand is what we need in the Super Eagles. It's sad when I turn on my team and I see our uh, men has scored. I don't know, look, man has scored. This one has scored. This one was the best midfielder. This one was the best. But you know how painful it is. Ladi, I see these boys almost every day. And I'm almost crying that, ah, you that I was crying when we were losing. You want to die? You're having fun. They don't care. <laughs> because our coaches or the people in charge of them did not give them a sense of belonging to want to win. It is sad. Can you imagine we are now being used as a dress rehearsal for countries going to the World Cup? We are going to play against Portugal. We are going to play against Costa Rica. Nonsense! 
It doesn't make sense. It's painful, laddie. I don't know how you guys see, but I am pissed. We are going to play with who? Or they should be the ones coming to play with us. Ghana mm -hmm. qualified for the World Cup. Morocco qualified for the World Cup. Are they better than us? Are they better than us? And then we stand, then, then, then we sit back and say, we are giants of Africa. They were better on the night. Ghana was better we on the night. They, they showed more tenacity. tenacity. Africa. They showed more tenacity. They showed much hunger that they wanted to qualify for the World Cup. Even right there in Nigeria when they came for the return leg. Yeah. You, you see you see in their game, they it showed that they were hungry. They were, they were really eager that they wanted to get that ticket. Our players didn't exhibit that kind of tenacity. They were kind of laid Lady, back. Once upon a time, the, the Super back. Eagles of Nigeria, Sunday only said, he said it with his mouth, Lady, both of us were at that awards. Sunday only said, said, how we used to play back in the days, during training at the National Stadium, during training, if you do not play well, you have 30,000 people watching you train. They are booing mm -hmm. you as they are doing nonsense. Who behind you on the day of the match? 60,000 capacity, you come and play nonsense. You can't do that. Because these guys knew that there were three, four people waiting to take over. There were three, four people waiting to take over their position. They knew it. These are people who understood what it meant playing for the national team. Do you know what it means to wear green, white, green? These right, boys yeah, don't, yeah. They don't care. They don't care anymore. It means so much. It means so much. Time is not our friend, gentlemen. Let's quickly move on. And to CAF Confederations Cup, we learned that Rivers United, they are supposed to have a game by 7 p.m. later this evening, or probably 6 p.m., against uh, Al Nassar of Libya. And we heard about all the stories that came out of Libya, how they were plugged into darkness, how they were not allowed to train at the, at the, at the private pitch that they got for the team, not the team where they were supposed to train generally at the private pitch and about how fans were chanting war songs because of a football game. Now, a lot of stories like this have been coming out from North Africa for a very long time. And up till this moment, Park is yet to make a statement. What does that connote for development of football in Africa, Dele? Um, Ladi is sad because um long before i even got involved in sports journalism this has this has obtained it's not news to me um obviously we beat them five nil in the first leg these guys are going to do whatever it takes to overturn that deficit but if they like they should pack the grass away from the field they cannot beat them six nil it's not possible it will not happen but it's something that has to be investigated We've been saying this over time, that when you go to North Africa, if they're not using laser beams, they're not they're stopping you at your hotel, they're not making life hard, they're not giving you food poisoning, there's something, something has to happen. And it's very, very sad, and it only happens in North Africa. It just goes to show that whether we like it or not, North Africa still rules African football. They are the powers that be, because the powers that be will not talk against, will not speak against whatever it is they do. They will sweep this case under the carpet and you know it. Let's just face reality and every time they come home, they come to our home, we do the info. That's what it means because there's nothing we're going to say or do that will change anything. The powers that be no. belong to North Africa. No, and that's true, uh, but apart from that, but when it comes to football as well, People use sorts of methods just to intimidate their opponent. You could see Liverpool or the Liverpool Man City in the Champions League about a couple of years ago. You know, they had to break the uh, uh, Man City's boss. You know, they have to shatter the window just to give the players in the team, you know, on the ball, just to frighten them before they get to the pitch. It did happen and they, they, they won the game. Napoli and um, was it Napoli and who was playing the la this last weekend? You know, they were having fireworks right behind their hotel so that the players will never sleep before they come to the pitch the next day. It will happen. But all we say is, if you want to take the pitch, come and take it. But we're going to beat you here. Just concentrate on your game and do what you do. If they're not going to come and touch you or touch your supporters, that's fine. I, 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 know, I know that all these things happen, but why is it that when all these uh, opponents come to Nigeria, we don't pay them back in their own coin. We give them good that's hospitality. Great. We entertain the way we, That's the way we understand the game. And that's why we've never won anything. I want to say that. Whoa. I would think so. That's but why we've not Af won anything. Let me tell you something. These North Africans have been in this game before us. 
they run this football in Africa. If you look at successful football teams in Africa now, you will have to go to North Africa. You get what I mean? So if they are going to Niger to play, they'll be like, what, what's going on? It's like Rangers International coming to play against Beaumont. Beaumont plays in the Premier League. But if you want to play Rangers against Beaumont, they will intimidate them because they can come with 10,000 or 50,000 fans and it won't do them anything. They played the UEFA Cup uh, final in Glasgow. About 60,000 of them were there in Manchester. How many were meant to go into the stadium? They made a lot of troubles around the whole place and they have to ban them for you, you know? But that's the way they feel they could intimidate you. They see Manchester as a home. You come in as an away team, Villarreal, to play us here. You're not gonna go away, you know? So that's the way I say, but if we can manage it properly, even in Nigeria, you know, CAF will not ban you for doing that, for intimidating your, you know, no, intimidate them. Let them know, yeah, let them know they are in for a game. Put fireworks behind their hotel. Boom, 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 boom. And they can't sleep. They don't Make some noise, man. If they don't have anybody to complain to that night, and the, and the game had to take place the next day. Uh -huh. hmm. We can do it. So, uh, Dele, Dele, you, know, you are of your opinion that once when we start to do all this on, before we can win if we don't do this we yes, can't sir. win is that what you said anything no we're too gentle yeah laddie i let want me, to borrow your me, words me, all is fair me, all is fair in war the nation's cup final <laughs> back home when i was here right in was it 2000 nigeria ghana 2000 we were there at the stadium cameroon came and took that trophy away from national stadium can you go to your day and do that? You will have How? to play very <laughs> well. <laughs> okay, after, but don't, 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 after don't, forget, don't, don't don't forget, don't forget that year you were talking about Isa Ayatu was still the CAF president and he was there as the national stadium. He was the highest mm -hmm. ruling personality at the national stadium. So when Victor Ipeba scored that penalty kick and no, he no, didn't no, know no. that he walked across the line, he decided to put his hand on his head. No, 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 no. When Victor Ekweba wasn't sure he scored the penalty because he did this, he wasn't yeah, sure. Had, yeah, he wasn't sure. <laughs> no VR no there, no VR. Yeah. <laughs> it's part of wow, our wow. so, so, so you guys are invariably you guys are saying that Nigerian team just have to get dirty before they can lay their hands on the on the continental trophy. Do yes. what needs to be done to attain victory. Want, Simple. But yeah, anybody, anybody, are... anybody didn't work all that part, anybody didn't do all that when they were dominant in Africa, when they won the initial, uh, the Cup uh, Champions League back to back, they didn't do all that. That's all right. There was one man who was in government during that period who gave them everything mm -hmm. they needed to succeed. There to was succeed. a man who pumped, in government, pumped in government funds. I didn't want to mention his name. He, put, he invested government funds into that team that you guys do not have a reason not to win. And they won back to back. And and they he, won, yeah. That is what investment does. And that is what motivation does. Ladi, I will do. pay you to pay whoever to get results. Ladi, you know these things. Let them stay in the Oriental Hotel. Put too much salt in there. So let them start going to the toilet before the next game. You know? Then they know they're in Nigeria. Um, we need to do something. If want to, it's true. Because these guys, they play all different sorts of games. You know? It's not easy, you know? Well, well, well I, just I think that's good. how far we can go this afternoon. It's so, Elifemi, I think that's how far we can go this afternoon. It's so nice oh, to have you guys back on Sports Engine. I must confess, <laughs> I really enjoyed today's show. Oh, I really, really enjoyed it. It's, it's a big eye-opener. I just hope that the powers that be actually watching this, probably they can learn a thing or two you know, from this so that we can move Nigerian football and African football to the next level. But I still feel that violence is not supposed to be tolerated in African football. It is not supposed to be accepted at all. And uh, no, you don't, you don't need, need to go to cut corners. You don't need to cut corners. You don't need to do anything dirty to win a game of football or any sport because you win some, no, you, you lose some. That's how far we're going to go. <laughs> oh, My no. guys are still oh, no. let, let me give you this. If you come to Edinburgh to play hard, right? Once you get into Edinburgh, every house is, they've got the hat flag on. That's when you know you are in town. You know uh -huh. what I mean? That's intimidation. They're not coming to your face. 
they just put it on so that when you're driving in on your bus, you're going to the state of oh my god, oh my god, what's going on? Uh -huh, yeah. But we don't have that in Nigeria. We just tend to be like, oh, you want Guguru? You want the pack? I can give you. Come and beat me and take my cup away. That's not right, man. Thank you very much, Enifemi Afolabi. And uh, I say kudos to you, Daily Ocean the Global. And uh, to you, a uh, sports fan out there, thank you very much for linking up with us today on another edition of Sports Engine. Hopefully, we should be back on Wednesday with another fantastic you know edition of sports engine by then the world cup will just be around the corner it's been nice linking up with you guys again today don't forget you can always link up with us on all social media platform facebook instagram and also on uh, youtube my name remains Ladi Egbedore. enjoy the rest of your evening bye for now